All right, welcome back, citizens of Hydelandia. Let's take a look. So I haven't stirred these this morning. Yesterday, I think I probably stirred them about five times. Unfortunately, I forgot to stir them right before bed. So they're gonna be, yeah, pretty uneven. You see, this is what I'm talking about here. Now this isn't a big deal. This is gonna even out, um, but this is what happens. So even stirring them five times, but then leaving them, we basically have, you know, tie-dyed hides. Commercial tanneries, these are done in, with agitators of some kind. A lot of times it's a big drum that's full of tan liquor of any kind, and it just spins constantly. So there's really just, you know, that completely eliminates this problem. There are other solutions to it too. You could use a washing machine, but you can't really just wa run a washing machine 24 seven. Like if you could program a washing machine to go through the pre-rinse cycle, you know what I mean? Like there's a, some of them have a cycle where it soaks for a while and then it spins a little and then it soaks for a while and then it spins a little. Uh, yeah, if you could like make one do that endlessly, that would be pretty cool. Uh, front loader type too, not a not a top loader. This looks milkier and possibly a little weaker, but it's hard to tell because it's not as clear as it was. This hide, which was put into this water that supposedly contains some alum, does not feel any different. I didn't really think it would. I think I'll go ahead and rinse this alum hide in there just in case there's a little alum on there. So we're just gonna put this with these, get it started, and it'll just proceed with tanning with the rest of the hides. All right, so I want the butts of these willows soaking in water. I just took them out of the water yesterday, so they're fine, but it's better until I get the cuttings cut for the store or sort out what I'm gonna use for baskets. I think I'm gonna just sell most of it this year because it was super popular last year and it really should be like, you know, wherever willow does well, um, every homestead should have a patch of willow if there's an appropriate uh, spot with damp ground. Okay, I wanna show you something cool here. As the lime leaves the hide and the hide is able to relax, the swelling goes down. And the swelling will actually, even though the lime destroys like the hair roots and the, the, the hair structures that are like down in the skin, it will still kind of like swell up and trap them. So look at this salt and pepper stuff right here. Can you see that? I hope, I'm gonna get real close here. Well, I hope you can see it, but there's some like salt and pepper stuff. That's hair roots that are coming out. If I continue to scud the hair side, I'm getting a bunch of stuff out that would just would not come out before. And that's one of the reasons I, I do scud repeatedly. You can see the stuff coming out of here. Even though I just went over this, it's like dirty brownish yellow color. And now I'm getting all this like salt and pepper speckles. Satisfying now to see that stuff coming out of the hide. Look at that. Nasty. Another thing I'm noticing or not noticing is those weird spots. I have not hit one yet where I'm just like, oh, there's one of those spots. And I like that. So maybe it is, I think it's alum, but maybe it's just reversing with all the rinsing. I'm assuming you people have been following this whole series. Can you see the milky, look at this liquid coming out. This is why we scud. I have a feeling this hide's gonna turn out just fine. The traditional beams for like the European tanneries and then, you know, later the American tanneries were very wide, like very big. Sometimes like maybe this wide or something. These huge things are pretty flat. You can throw large pieces of hide on there without just dragging them all over the floor. Okay, this time we're just gonna see a few shreds of tissue come off this and this is how fast I'm gonna go over it. My primary goal with this step is just pushing out some water and getting it back into the water. And whatever comes out of the hide with the water, obviously. Which in this case is still quite a bit. So also if I had one of these large beams it would really make this job much easier because think about how much less time I'd spend shifting the height around. So I have a beam this wide covering twice as much area. Yay, we get to rinse the beam. I have to say, I do like this flusher quite a bit. 
Um, there's some things I could change. I might make some actual modifications to this tool. We'll do that some other time. But I really like the fact that I can leave it out, you know, like I don't have to put the tool away because all my other tools are carbon steel and they rust and uh, especially with like, they get like some tanning solution on them or something. It could be corrosive, especially salt. These I want to come and stir ideally like every hour all day. They're going to take up the solution quicker. They're, the color's going to start to even out. This hide is tanning very rapidly. In here, it's already partially tanned. The color is more even already, and that's not going to take that long. And you know, when I stir these today, I'm going to stir this as well. Okay, get suited up here. Today we're going to take a look at the cattle hide, which is basically ready to go in the tan. It's just that the tan's not ready for it. We're going to prepare the tan for that, and we're going to move these sheep hides out of this old, weak, nasty liquor. So let's look here on this side where there's shadow. Now you can see there's some unevenness there, and that's from... You know, if the hides had been moved continuously or frequently enough when they were first put in, this color would be very even, or a lot more even. I actually did stir them quite a bit the first day, but you know, it just wasn't enough. There's four hides in there. They were pretty modeled, as you've probably seen in another clip in this video. They've evened out a lot, but not completely. Now, they will probably even out most of the way in the next solution. If they don't, it would probably be mostly because that solution is different. It could be a slightly different color because, you know, it's the same species, but different batch of bark, you know, different bacteria uh, working in the bark. Who knows what? So there is that factor. I mean, you can see it. It did quite a bit of tanning, so it was definitely worth putting them in there. So I want to get these hides rinsed off real well. Now one of these, and it's, I think it's this one, is a lighter color because it went in a day later than the rest of them, so a lot of the solution was already used up. Now you probably look at this and say, well, there's still a lot of color there, like is there more tan? And there's certainly going to be a little bit, but there's very, very little. Not enough worth saving. When I pick this up, it's like, it's a weak color, and a lot of it is actually just kind of like, some kind of powdery sediment or something. It's not tannin. And I could leave this in here for a month and keep stirring it, and that liquor is still going to be red because not all of the color in that liquor is um, tannin or stuff that's going to bind with the hide. So it's not going to get much lighter than that, really. That liquor is used up, so I'm going to dump that out here. The tree can eat it. There's all kinds of nutrients in there that the tree will enjoy. No, don't, don't fall in the dirt. Another thing I don't like about plastic beams, that slippery thing, the hides are always slipping off of them. And here's our squirrel hide. You can see it's actually pretty even color. Took a lot of color, it's looking good. So I'm just going to slosh them around and then kind of just squeegee my hand down here to get rid of some of the water. We'll just do that like three times in clean water. And I think I'll also put each one in its own clean water. Like I said before in another video, I think the last one, uh, Bark tan seems to be magic, no matter how stinky and gross things are when you're tanning. By the time you dry it and oil it, it just seems to smell like wonderful leather. Okay, this time we'll fill it a little fuller, put all the hides in it, slosh them around, do that maybe a couple more times. While that's filling up, let's take a look at the cattle hide. Now this is real thick, so the thicker parts of it are not gonna feel really relaxed because they're just, they're thick and they're hard. Just the nature of cattle skin. Thick, tight fibered, not stretchy. Okay, so I'm actually done 
scudding the flush side of this and I've just been doing this side. Whoa. I'm so over this whole outdoor mud tanning. I shouldn't be doing this video series. I should be building a better tanning area. Or at the very least, like an outdoor paved floor. That would be the, the biggest thing right now, besides the new beam. So I probably scudded this four times. Dehairing didn't count, I don't count that. But after that, like, uh, the scud once, the second time, more hair roots came out. The third time, even more hair roots and more yellow stuff, like yellow liquid. Nasty looking, I don't know how to describe it, yellow. So at first, like, those things were increasing, and I was getting even more of them. And now, the water's clear. That's what I'm looking for. The water's clear. I'm in, on parts of this, I'm going to get more hair roots, but I don't care that much. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much if they're in there. But it does demonstrate this principle that I'm talking about, where the hide needs to relax to start letting go of what's inside the skin. So now when I do this, this liquid is basically clear, so I'm done. I'm not gonna put any more effort into that. The flush side is very clean because it's been gone over so many times. And let's take advantage of this soaking water. These hides in. There's a little bit of color coming out of here, which is either, you know, just other coloring matter in the bark besides tannin, or it's loose tannin that's not bound. Refill this again. And once they get rinsed one more time in here, they'll be ready to move into the next tanning solution. Put new water in here, put that back because I don't have a bark solution for that yet. I am seeing some weird small yellow spots on here. There's one there, there's one there. I don't know what those are about. I'm kind of thinking they might be from this tub, like if there's some metal oxides in there, maybe aluminum oxide or something. So you can see there's a little bit of coloring matter in there, even on the, what was that, the third rinse, I think. grab these. You know, they still feel like the texture pretty much of raw hides because this tan hasn't penetrated very far into the skin. It's just like a thin, thin penetration on the out, both outside surfaces of the skin. As the hide becomes more tanned, like it won't flop around as much. It won't feel as like, um, yeah, flowy and, and liquid as it does now. And it'll start to slowly kind of like set even just like a day or two, it's gonna take a lot of tannin out of here and then there'll be more of a difference. Now, I don't really mind a little bit of unevenness. Um, it's not a huge deal to me, but you know, if you were doing any kind of production, you'd wanna to start to uh, solve that problem of getting an even color. And the trick really is just to keep the hide moving while the initial surface tan uh, takes hold because that's all that really is. It's just that parts are less tanned than others. It's that simple. Here is the other piece that was partly tanned already. You can see it's much more even, but some of these color differences like that dark stain there are never gonna go away. Actually evened out pretty good. And that's really starting to feel like leather now. And I would say most of this is probably tanned through. Let's cut like a thick little piece. Okay, that is actually tanned all the way through already. I'm gonna leave it in there for, you know, at least another week, just to make sure that the whole skin soaks up as much tan as it wants to take. I'll just keep stirring it whenever I stir the other hides. There could be parts of the skin that are not tanned through, and uh, it is kind of interesting that this doesn't feel super firm, like up here at this neck where it's all wrinkly, it feels pretty loose, and I think that really indicates the nature of this sheepskin, that it's kind of a loose fibered 
skin. It's not a compact skin. I would expect like a goat skin to feel more firm than this uh, when it was completely tanned. But that's the nature of goat, is to be more like firm, uh, packed, tight fibers. Okay, so again, I want to stir these quite a bit for the next couple days because I'm still trying to even that color out. Once the outer color is pretty even, I can definitely leave it sitting for longer periods of time. But these are still taking up tannin pretty fast. I mean, there was only so much in there. So this could get weak pretty fast too. And I'm expecting to have to bump the strength up a little bit. For now, I'm just putting the lid on and trying to remember to come here and stir it at least a couple times a day, preferably like four or five times a day until that color evens out a bit. Now, until the tan is ready for this, we're just gonna soak it. Okay, this amount of bark is about four sessions that probably averaged maybe 15 or 20 minutes. So that's quite a bit of time. It could be as much as 80 minutes of chopping just to get this much bark. I don't know how much that is. It's probably like seven to 10 gallons worth. And that was just on pieces of firewood and I just like chopped it off the outside. Okay, so this is what I tell people to do when they're preparing materials to make liquor, at least with bark. I fill the pot up, you know, not all the way, but mostly, and then I just want it covered with water, so I'll have it within about an inch here. Apparently some tannins are destroyed by high heat, um, so I try to keep things below a simmer usually and cook for maybe like three or four hours the first time. Then we're gonna drain that liquor off, cover it again, cook it for another few hours, and those are the two liquors we'll be working with for our cattle hide. In the meantime, I'm gonna keep chopping bark because I probably will need it. And if I don't, I'll just have it chopped for later for the next hide. 